The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let's take a moment to give thanks as we worship. You must retain faith that you will prevail in the end, regardless of the difficulties, and at the same time, you must confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. This is called the Stockdale Paradox, and we'll learn more about that today. Peter adds to that. <coughs> For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and it begins with us. What will become the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? And here we add to the, the paradox. Add this to it. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will, entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. We sing the first two verses of Eternal Father, strong to say, please rise as you're able. understand ourselves, because we cannot reconcile ourselves, we come to you for your divine help. Merciful God, Creator and Redeemer, you know completely and love us utterly. There is not a thought or deed of mine that you do not know or understand. Please forgive my sins and remove my shame. Heal all my diseases, strengthen my faith, widen my love, and give meaning to my life. In your holy name we pray. Amen. It is written, Christ Jesus did not arrive in the world to condemn us, but that the world through him might be saved. His words give me the confidence to declare to you my brothers and sisters in Christ, the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God.
The first lesson is from Deuteronomy 10, 17-21. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow, and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner, therefore, for you were so sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and hold fast to him, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God who has done for you these great and terrifying things that your eyes have seen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. The second lesson is from Hebrews 11, 8-16. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in the tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants, as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they, will, they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you Thanks to God. God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let everyone in all the world, men, women, and children, fear the Lord and stand in awe of him. For when he but spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. And with a breath, he can say the plans of all the nations who oppose him. But his own plan stands forever. His intentions are the same for every generation. Blessed, Blessed is, is the nation whose God is the Lord, whose people he has chosen as his own. The Lord gazes down upon mankind from heaven where he lives. He has made their hearts and closely watches everything they do. Amen. As you're able, please rise. Glory the Holy Gospel to according to St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. You have heard that said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Please be seated. We receive the next two verses.
mercy and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord, and from our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm about to give you a message that might be a little bit different than the one you have, uh, but if you want the message at the end of the worship, as I've adjusted it, they're right there on, on the chairs. For most of us old folks, and that's all of us here this morning, <laughs> In case you don't know the name, James Stockdale, he was the vice presidential running mate of independent presidential candidate Ross Perot's in 1992. In the 1992 vice presidential debate, James Stockdale appeared opposite Republican Dan Quayle and Democrat Al Gore. If you remember that far back, Candidate Stockdale and remember for a very honest question. Who am I? Why am I here? Most Americans remember, if anything at all, a confused, white-haired, hard of hearing old joke who mysteriously showed up in a vice presidential debate, not knowing who he was or why he was there. Well, there's more to this story. James Stockdale was an American hero. While flying from the USS Oriskany on a mission over North Vietnam on September 9, 1965, my ship might have been the Oriskany's plane guard. Then, Commander Stockdale's plane was hit by enemy fire and completely disabled. He ejected from his plane parachuting into a small village, was captured and beaten. He was held prisoner of war in the whole low prison for the next seven and one-half years. 
as a senior naval officer, he was one of the primary organizers of prisoner resistance and was regularly tortured and denied medical attention for his damaged leg that he suffered during his injection and capture. For his heroic service as a prisoner of war, he was eventually promoted to Vice Admiral Stockdale and awarded our nation's highest military honor, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Jim Collins, for his book, Good to Great, interviewed Admiral Stockdale and asked, who didn't make it out of the Vietnamese prison camps? And Mr. Collins named the answer, the Admiral's answer, the Stockdale Paradox or the Stockdale Puzzle. And this is what Stockdale said. Oh, that's easy. The optimists, oh, they were the ones who said, we're going to be out by Christmas. And Christmas would come. Christmas would go. Then they'd say, we're going to be out by Easter. And Easter would come and Easter would go. And then Thanksgiving, and then it would be Christmas again, and they died of a broken heart. Stockdale added, <clears throat> which Mr. Collins called the Stockdale Paradox. Here's the puzzle. You must never Confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose, with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they may be. If we add, God will be victorious in the end, to the second part, this is a starting point for an adult view of faith. But be careful. We've all heard the faith healer stories. They're all it takes is faith preachers. Life will become a bowl of cherry stories. If you believe or send for the miracle water, guaranteed to bring you health and happiness. <coughs> Excuse me. So then, what do we do? Get a good belly laugh at such foolishness. But don't turn the question of faith into an agreement. Getting the folks to play nice. Being good to each other. <coughs> yet not trusting God to be in charge and doing anything. Our message this morning from the 11th chapter of <coughs> Hebrews is more than a list of long gone and often forgotten heroes of faith. <laughs> they are heroes because they shared one thing. They all believed that God was going to be the winner in the end. They didn't live their faith perfectly. No one does. But we must remember our God is forgiving and loving as a father. <coughs> in the end, he will be the winner. And our trust in him will make us winners in the end as well, even in the midst of the chaos and confusion of our lives. Like, and this is becoming very popular, the pain of my disease feels unbearable. And today you could fly to California for an assisted suicide. Or you can remember that God will be victorious. And I am connected to God. So I will suffer with and live with my pain and find my security in God. My country is in the middle of a revolution, a civil war, with all the horror that goes with it. Our leaders aren't leading. God will be victorious. And my refuge is in God. So I will speak out for justice and be a voice for reason, instead of violence and despair. My family is falling apart. God will be victorious, and I am called to bring the love of God to my family.
to be a witness to God's love, understanding, and forgiveness. When we think of faith like this, we can remember the three thoughts that Admiral Stockdale woke every day while a prisoner of war. I'm still in this horrible place. Someday, though, I'm going to get out. If that's so, what should I do? And how should I act today? Well, let's add a fourth. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. With our God, we have a trusted, loving, and forgiving Father who in times get tough, doesn't tell us, put on a happy face, but as Paul writes, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will we not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is condemned? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who is indeed is interceding for us? What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? For your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights nor depths, nor anything else, else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And for more hope, Peter writes, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you shared Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And it begins with us. What will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let all who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. In the midst of the chaos and suffering of this world, ours and our neighbors, as children of God, we have the confidence in the hope to come, even when we do not see it. Comfort one another with these words. In his holy name, amen. 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 As you're able, please rise. Now I ask, what do you believe? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, 
God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us then and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who let the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Offering and tithe may be placed in the plate of the bookshelves, the hymnals, as you exit or mail to Post House Box 1550. The Offertory. Within the majesty of God's gracious generosity, we honor and revere the God who is beyond all earthly powers and above all people and things. We are still before God and celebrate the holy majesty of God, whose grace is beyond our understanding, who has taken away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the wisdom that comes down from above, reveal the stain of sin, Mark a death that we may cling to Christ as our only hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For faith that trusts in Jesus Christ alone and joyfully receives his gift of forgiveness, life and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have assembled here today to be restored by absolution, led by the voice of God's word, fed at his holy table, and sanctified to walk in the way of life, way of Christ today, and even to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church and the work of God's kingdom here and throughout the world for all pastors and servants of Christ who care for his people and for each of us that we fulfill our baptismal vocation to worship, witness, and serve in Christ's holy name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our nation, and for all who lead us, for all who make, administer, and judge our laws, for the men and women of our armed forces, and for all police, firefighters, medical personnel, and emergency workers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are sick, all who are suffering mind, body and mind, and all the dying, and those who grieve their losses, that God may supply them in mercy with healing, peace, and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our roles as stewards of all that God has entrusted to our care. For generous hearts to return to him the tithes and offerings that he is due. And for the loving hearts that respond to our neighbor in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who come to the table of the Lord today that they may receive with faithful hearts his body in the bread and his blood in the cup. And all the blessings that come to us in this holy communion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us in our troubles, O Lord. Comfort us in our need. And keep us in your perfect peace, all whose hearts are stayed on you. We take time for prayer.
Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we are bold to pray as we taught your disciples. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you.